Hello YouTube land people. So this is a really warm June night and I just have my bathing suit on. Um, no big deal. Anyway, I have a question. Do you, does anyone out there think that defunding the police, whatever that means, I, I'm assuming it, it means you don't have as many running around and, and um, harassing non-crime things, things that are just like, oh, I don't know, let's say you have a harmless but crazy person on the street and let's just say, you know, they're kind of, I don't know, maybe just kind of hanging around. Let's just say they're just like hanging around a, a business and the business doesn't like it. So they're like, you know, don't hang around. And let's just say they're kind of crazy so they don't understand. You know, do, do they really need the cops to come there? Like guys with guns that have a license to kill, basically. I mean, what if this crazy person, it makes it even worse. You know, what if they don't understand what the cop's saying? What if they don't, because they're so crazy, they just don't understand. Maybe they're intoxicated. I don't know. But do they really, do we, do we as taxpayers really need to spend that much money on stuff like that? When really, maybe all they need is just, I don't know, one social worker to say, hey, if you need help, here's the card. You can get a free meal. You can get help off the street, blah, blah, blah. You could maybe whatever, if they need help with, with their addiction or something, you know, things like that. Just try to figure out what's going on with this person, you know, um, and try to help them. So, I mean, that costs money too, yeah. But I don't even know, like, how much money we're even talking about here when, when we're talking about defunding. Um, maybe certain poor communities just need financial help, and maybe we could redirect that some of that money to help people financially. So, like, get, like, a basic income, you know, something like that. Anyway, what really concerns me, though, is I don't think defunding the police, that's the ones that drive around with the uniforms on, is going to do anything to help sex work, to, to stop the arrest and the harassment and the abuse of sex workers and, you know, giving sex workers criminal records and getting away with all kinds of stuff. You know, you're never going to hear about that on the, on the five o'clock news. You'll never hear about the sex worker that got shot and killed, you know, a few years back in Ohio. You're never going to hear about the cop that was going around with a, a fake uh, passport and and doing all kinds of things to sex workers and then arresting them. You're never going to hear about that on the on the five o'clock news because no one cares, you know. But the thing is, those aren't those aren't cops with badges and uniforms. Those are undercover cops called vice cops, and no one's saying anything about defunding those. And actually, those need to go away altogether. You can't have any of those. You have to completely get rid of the vice, but no one's saying anything about those. I wonder why. And those are the real criminal ones because those are the ones that get away with all kinds of stuff. Arresting people for what I would call moral things, like personal life decisions that adults make. I mean, you're spending tax money on that. No one seems to get it. No one understands that. M much more dollars are wasted on chasing adult workers and harassing adult workers than other things, I would say. Much, many, many more dollars are wasted on that. So, yeah, I would say don't just defund. I would say get rid of completely vice, that is, cops. The other cops, you can defund those a little bit. And, you know, maybe some store owners might want to think about hiring private security. I don't know. If there's not that many around, those cops, that is. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I think so, though. I think getting rid of vice cops would definitely help and give money back, more money back to the community and less taxing us. But um, the elephant in the room, which no one really, I'm surprised no one really even knows about, is what um, is called peak oil. And, you know, it looks a lot like peak oil to me. And not to sound like, you know, some conspiracy theorist, theorist, but it really looks like 
the CIA and all this news propaganda and all this stuff. I'm not saying this stuff isn't real, like the virus thing isn't real. I'm just saying it could be like completely blown out of proportion because the elephant in the room again, I think is peak oil. And I think they're, they're just trying to make all this look like that other thing when it's really this other thing, which they need to gain control over and stop the plane flights to cut down on oil use before peak oil causes everything to collapse. So it's like they need to gain control. This is my theory. So my theory is that when, as things, the con economy picks up, as it probably will eventually a little, I think oil prices are gonna skyrocket. And that's because we're already at the plat the bumpy plat what they call a bumpy plateau. And you can't grow the economy if you can't grow oil production. If your oil production is here, okay, and it can't go up, your economy, our economy, all economies depend on ever growing more and more production of oil. Because to grow an economy, you need an ever growing more and more production of oil. Do we have a creamy center in the middle of the earth that produces enough oil for us? I highly doubt it. And even if it did produce some, it's not gonna produce so much oil that we can continue growing indefinitely, exponentially grow. We can't do that on a finite planet. So yeah. I think the real elephant in the room is peak oil, and I think all this is being done to cover that fact up. But once our economy gets back going, I think oil prices are going to skyrocket. What do you think? Take care.